All right, welcome back to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video, I'm going to be covering the Z-axis assembly and tramming. You're gonna need these three shorter extrusions. You're gonna need M3 by eights, M3 by 12s, and then this piece here. All right, you're also gonna to wanna to get some M3 hex nuts, and I'm gonna try using this user mod. It's not included in the official bomb, but it's a T-nut that you can use. Okay, I went ahead and set a couple of these T-nuts in here with the M3 um, nuts in there as well. I'm going to go ahead and screw the M312s into the front. And I've got these M38s that I'm going to put in through where I just put the T-nuts in. Okay, so after that bit, you should have something that looks like this. And then we're going to move on to the next step, which requires you putting this piece with these two holes for wrench access um, and, sc and screws into here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put M3 8 in here and just kind of leave them fairly loose. Probably about five or six turns. And then after that, you're going to slide, make sure that you have the, the holes that way facing you. You're going to slide these in, making sure they're trapped. And then you're going to basically just um, tighten these up. All right, next up, I have preloaded several of these M3 nuts. Okay, and for preloading, you're going to need six here in the back, um, one on each side here, and then two on the bottom. And from what I understand, you want to put these in ahead of time. If you don't, you're going to have a hard time later, and you might have to disassemble something. All right, now on to the Z-axis, and we're going to need these extrusions here, the B extrusions, and they have no holes or anything on them. They're pretty easy to pick out. And then we also need the M3 by 6s M3 by 10s and we're going to need a lot of the um, M3 nuts as well for preloading. All right, and basically the M3 by 10s go in the ends. All right, for these extrusions, you're going to need four total uh, M3 nuts. So, and I'm using the T-nuts the here. Um, once you have those in, it doesn't really matter exactly where they're at because we're going to be adjusting the, the distance in a later step. One thing I do recommend is checking to make sure you can put a screw all the way through to each of these nuts. Uh, because sometimes the machining of the inside of the screw isn't so great and you definitely don't want to run into that later in the build where you have to disassemble something. Alright, and then you're going to put some M36s in these on the outsides and you're going to leave two of the M3s nuts on the inside. I'm not sure if you need them on both, but I know for sure you do need them on one. Uh, and that's for the stepper motors that are going to later be put on here. Okay, and now I'm going to flip these extrusions over and I'm going to insert a nut at the bottom and I'm going to flip this one over as well and then I'm going to turn it once and I'm going to add this over, I'm going to add six um, M3 nuts here. Now depending on which version of the manual you're going by, this some of these preloads can be added later as well. Now at this point we're also going to need the Z extrusions. Remember these are where you have about 33 millimeters or so from the edge of the rail to the side with the hole at the end. Not to be confused with the Y which are similar. So you're going to flip these over and you're going to be adding um, three on each side and if you are going to do a bone and set up you need to add additional ones as well on the left side. Alright at this point I've got the three in each and I'm doing direct drive so that's all I need. All right, and if at this point you don't have your um, carriage uh, stoppers on, just go ahead and put those on with an M38. I just put mine on. All right, now we're at the point where we are going to use, uh, we're gonna connect the rails to the bottom piece, um, or at least the piece with the, uh, the six preloaded. And again, that's in a later step if you're in a newer manual. <clears throat> and we're just going to slide these in over the screw and then tighten them down. It says wrench access, so that's how you know where you want to tighten. Don't worry about getting them super tight yet because we're probably going to move them and measure them up. 
in one of the, the later steps. We just want to get them on there for now. Okay, those are those are on there. So now you should have something. Oh, and make sure that this side, uh, you know, you put <clears throat> you do the screws on, on the right side. So you got the short end here with the cap. And then the next, basically rinse and repeat for the next part. It's helpful if the screws are roughly the same distance on the, the top as they are in the bottom. And again, it doesn't really matter at this point because we're going to be fixing the distance on a later step. So just loosely tighten them. <laughs> okay. All right, now we're ready for the next step. Okay, now we're going to need two more extrusions, and they're C extrusions, so they have holes at both ends. And those are going to go on here on the sides. And you're also going to need your ruler uh, so you can measure the distances. And these are just going to slide over, and then you're going to wrench through them, through the excess holes, and you're going to repeat for both sides. Okay, so something I did that helped me with the spacing was just use a piece of tape and marked it carefully. And then I just did that on the top and the bottom um, and marked 58 millimeters across. Then I double checked all my measurements. So I think everything is looking pretty good. All right, now we're going to just go ahead and put on these rail stoppers on the bottoms. And I'll use the M3 inserts as well for that. Okay, and I'm just going to set these in with an M3 by 8. There we go. And you can see the little T-nut insert there. Same drill on the other side. Okay, now we're gonna be attaching these uh, parts to the carriages and you're gonna need a couple things. These M2 by eight socket heads, uh, screws. You're also gonna need, if, if you're using bigger wrenches like I am, um, you're going to need a small Allen wrench because there's a hidden access hole that you're going to have to be able to fit it through in order to screw it in. So if you don't have something like this, um, you're going to have to get one. And what you're going to want to do is just drop the screws into the four holes. Once you get them in, then you just got to line them up and screw it down. Also, a reminder to use the lock, the, your Loctite or whatever, especially on these screws because they're going to be moving around a lot. So here's the hidden one that you got to use the Allen key for. Here we go. And not, you don't want to do too tight. Make sure you check your rail movement after you screw them down. If it's kind of having a hard time moving, you might have put them in too tight. So just make sure you check that. Okay, I've got both in now and they're both moving pretty good. So I think I'm all set on this part. Okay, now we're going to connect the carrier to the frame the rails here just from a reminder if you haven't already done it preload an m3 here and here and then six of them on the back all right if you are using the t-nuts like i am just make sure you line those up um, before you screw things in so otherwise like you can see there's a hole here a hole here a hole here and a hole here on the back so the directions have you do in the front first which is fine but make sure you check that as well Okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and insert the screws, and they are m 38 for this first piece. Okay, I've got those two in now, um, and now I'm going to flip it and do the back side. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put in the uh, m 3 by 12s There's four of them, and again, I'm using these T-nuts. You're supposed to make sure that there's two in the center, which there are, and then I, when I went ahead and lined up these to make sure that they would fit in. The directions also say to use a ball end uh, driver, so I'm going to use that instead of the straight edge or the regular one that I've been using, which I actually prefer these because they have the nice little rotator here and they're a little bit higher, higher quality. But be careful, you don't want to crush it or strip it. All right, I've now got all four screws in on the back, and I'm, I already did these ones on the bottom, so I'm good to go. Okay, um, I ended up trimming my bed a little bit. It moves freely, but I was concerned with a little binding, so I did end up having to adjust these just a tiny bit. But everything looks to be moving just fine now. So if you're if you're getting anything that's binding or kind of caught, uh, you definitely want to adjust these and loosen up either these down here or these up here. But I would 
I would prefer. I think these made more sense for me to, to change and adjust. All right, now I'm at the point where I'm going to remove these temporary extrusions that helped with the tramming. That's just these outside ones. So I'm going to be taking those screws out. 